The Flix Book Club. The Flix Book Club. Yeah, I'm not doing this. Hi, welcome to Netflix Book Club. I'm Steve McDonald. I'm Casey Aurora. I'm Dennis Rooney. Uh, You can check us out at flixbookclub.com. This week, we are watching How to Survive a Plague. Uh, This is a movie from 2012, directed by David France. Uh, It is about the AIDS epidemic, and it is about the activist groups ACT UP and TAG, uh, and how they dealt with the... uh, with with what at the time was just a plague, uh, and it was how they enacted change and how they uh, stood up to uh, incredibly conservative government officials who didn't want to do anything about the AIDS crisis. Pharmaceutical reform. And it was about. Right? And it was about. Uh, it ended up being about pharmaceutical reform. Uh, at a certain point, at the beginning, it was literally just getting people to pay attention. Yeah. Just at all. Kidding. Right. Right. Uh, because being gay was not okay in any fashion. Um, I chose this movie mm-hmm. because I uh, it is very sad. Yeah. And I've been wanting to watch well, it for a while. Well, you assumed it was going to be very sad, right? I assumed it was going to be very sad. I had heard from a lot of people it was going to be very sad. It was on my list for a really long time of like documentaries I wanted to watch, um, but I never... There's never a moment where I'm just hanging out in my room and I'm like, I want to be really sad right now. For the record, I thought when you picked this movie last week, I thought it was some hipster bull about like zombies (laughs) and stuff like that. I also kind of just going by the name alone. (laughs) Yeah, I thought it was like, oh, if a zombie's coming at you, grab a shovel. But it's (laughs) no, not that at all. No, no, it's not that uh, whatsoever. So what you what would you what you pick? What you say after you watched it? Um, after I watched it, I, I definitely say stream it. Um, Mm -hmm. I definitely say stream it. I've got opinions that I'll get into. Okay. Uh, all right, cool. I'm going to say don't stream it. I just, (laughs) I I just, you know, it's a good movie. It's just not something that I would, you know, like I feel like every history class, no, 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 I'm sorry. No, every, uh, health class should make their, uh, students watch this movie. You like know, it w- should be required. It's required viewing for every health class in the American education. You know, screw that. The world. I think every health class should watch this movie, but I don't think that I would be at a party or in casual conversation and say stream the movie. So I'm gonna say don't stream it. Heavy, heavy stream it. Right. This was wow. a fantastic documentary. It this was a, a fantastic really documentary. Movie. Uh, I will agree that you have to, you got to kind of be ready to watch it. But I'm also going to say this, and I'll get into the details later. But I thought it was more of a triumphant story than a sad story. It is, it is about a depressing thing. I agree. Yeah, I but agree. it's a triumphant story. Heavy stream it. Right. Awesome. Okay, uh, we will be back in just a moment after this clip. Play. Forty million infected people is a fucking play. We are in the worst shape we have ever, ever, ever been in. All those pills we're shoveling down our throats, forget it. ACT UP has been taken over by a lunatic fringe. They can't get together. Nobody agrees with anything. All we can do is field a couple of hundred people at a demonstration. That's not going to make anybody pay attention. Not until we get millions out there. And we're back. Oh, I'm so we're happy. Having, we were having a laugh in the break. Say, say why, Casey. I, I was just going to, like, I walked in here going, oh, man, I don't want to be the guy who has to say stream it because these guys said don't stream it because I don't want it to be in the duds. I just didn't want it to <laughs> fall short and be next to be in, like, the crap section. Right next to Old Boy. Right next this, to This really good documentary <laughs> yeah. about AIDS that we just can't stomach, though. So we're like, don't stream it, right. all three of us. Yeah. Right. I, I, wish, I wish that, like... You know, man, I wish I watched this before Occupy Wall Street. I wish I watched this before just the activism, the uh, the um, I mean, the camaraderie is is a, is not the right word, but it's yeah. one of the words. It's one of the ingredients, a minor uh-huh. ingredient to watch 
what um, these people did. Uh, these people's in like the people of the times, not just homosexuals. Like because you have straight people, gay people, does regardless of minor uh, minority status or financial. This, the documentary also examines like you know the ACT UP group and the offshoot tag between like eighty two and ninety four. I'd say that's about the span of time it covers yeah. it. Eighty one to ninety four. So eighty one and it's like to ninety six. Ninety six was yeah, when they really somewhere got in there. And I just kept watching fixed. this movie and thinking about the Occupy Wall Street movement. No matter how you felt about it. If they had had the organization skills right. and the dedication, you really see how much change people can get done with this documentary when literally it's a life or death. Like, I'm going to die, right. and I'm going to yeah. use the rest of my time to make a big scene about this huge issue that's not getting it's, enough attention. Well, let's. I, I want to start a little bit at the beginning. I don't want to go yeah. through the whole movie sure. because I honestly can't. It's too much information. It, this is a thick movie. This is a thick movie. Mm -hmm. Um I will say this as just a, a stylistic note before we start. Right. This is one of the best archival documentaries. The right. footage I've on this is insane. Seen. That I got to say, I, I'm like, I didn't even know they had cameras that still <laughs> held up. Like, this no, is and ridiculous. It's, like, like it's, um, it's just one of those things. It's like, it's, uh, it's, it's very, it is so difficult mm. to make an incredibly interesting documentary based off of archival footage only right. and based off of, like, there were barely any modern day interviews. Mm -hmm. Like, if you think about it, like, throughout the entire movie, there's not a ton. There was of some, but definitely the most interesting and captivating parts was the raw footage that they cut together. And what was the director's name? Uh, David Francis? David France. David yeah. France. Uh, I, I looked it up afterwards. He, I mean, he was involved in this uh, scene, this community from the start filming. So I think that's actually yeah. his footage. So this is like one of those documentaries in a way that's been in the makes but for like decades. But if you see decades. at the credits, like from archival footage, thanks to, there is a huge list. Yeah, that's oh, true. Yeah. Yeah, there's that's a true. ton of archival footage. Well, because this was, this was like, I mean, if you think about the like like the 80s into the 90s, that was the era of like, those big VHS cameras yeah. where where it was like if you had some money you could you could be a consumer you know who owns one of these things I mean the, you see them in the in the documentary you see people like because they're filming other people who have cameras and they're huge yeah. they're massive it's like putting a boombox on your shoulder and just Did you never shoot around. with one of those ever you never I've held one I've shot with them before they're funny yeah it's they're big funny they're, funny how yeah. they're just funny because they're huge. They're just, it's ridiculous. Funny like a clown? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Funny um, like a clown. Okay. So, well, yeah. it is big. It is oversized. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you know, like, and you, the the list of people who are in this documentary and, like, the things that they do, and it's just like, I, I mean, during Big the, numbers, man. Big numbers for a big cause. Right. This was, this was almost, honestly, I felt kind of good after I watched the movie. It was oh, yeah. like a rocky road, but, like, when, I, when it was over and, like, you see all that they accomplished. Right. It was a good feeling. Well, and, and, I, and that's my thing is, is that, like, like... When you look at the beginning of the movement, like that to me is one of the most amazing things of of just like hatred for like 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 people at the times hatred for a group of people. Right. Yeah. Was incredible. It's because disgusting. When it's absolutely disgusting. But it's that moment when like like when they do the first, because every like every kind of act, like when they go into a new section, they have that counter that's counting up how many people yeah. have like are infected or that have died. Deaths from uh, AIDS. Yeah. And like the first time that they do it, it's like seven hundred and fifty thousand, and it's like seven hundred and fifty thousand people is a lot of people. Already, it's a lot of people, and that's the number that they like start with. Right. Yeah. Like we like. It's just that moment where it's like, how many people die from drunk driving mm -hmm. a year? It's like a couple thousand, and we have like programs about it, and yeah. like yeah. everybody knows, and there's a ton of laws and all these different things about it. And you've got seven hundred and fifty thousand people that die, but everybody's just like, yeah, they're gay. There's there's this one line in the documentary that just like kind of just chilled me to the bone when they said that uh, AIDS related deaths are the number one killer amongst men under forty in New York City. Yeah, at that, at that yeah. point in time, and I was just like, "This is like th it is a plague." Like, th and yeah. when they, yeah, you just didn't, you know, like just to think about that, like, yeah, this is literally like those zombie movies, these apocalypse movies, where or like some virus comes along, and it's 
this is what's happening. And it's yeah. so scary because it's, it's real life. Yeah, and what the scariest part about it is that the government and even a lot of people initially at that time are just turning the other cheek to it. Like they're oh, just yeah. Bro- right. ju- they're just they don't want to acknowledge it. They're g- these you know, gay people with AIDS are getting turned away from hospitals. And that's They've where it no opens up. Yeah. Yeah. That's where it starts. That's where it starts with uh, ACT UP begins to kind of making its primary focus getting drugs out quickly, working drugs, but quickly out to... Well, and it's also just getting the word out to... It's getting people to... to like, it's just that... Like, Reagan wouldn't even say the word AIDS. He right. was unwilling to bring it up because... He felt that gay people were subhuman, and he felt that they shouldn't get help. That it was good that there that AIDS was happening at mm. that time period. He felt that he literally felt that it was like this is a plague from God to kill the gays because that's what God wants to yeah. do. So you've got people like Reagan who feel that way. The m- most powerful person in the country feels that way. And yeah. Then you have a woman like Iris. Who from Queens? She used to be a scientist, oh my God. the chemist. What a what a gangster she was! Yeah. I will say this: when you first see her, when she first shows up and starts talking to people at that at that meeting, yeah. she it looked like oh, this is where they based the SNL character Pat from. Right, <laughs> she's wearing like a floral button down. She's got curly hair and she's just kind of short and squat. But this woman gets extremely involved with the movement. And uh, and she's not gay. She doesn't have AIDS. She no. just has a wealth of information on on the uh, pharmaceutical. Uh, I, system. I, lo- the moment that they were like that, they were like, "Yeah, she's not gay. She's in retirement. She's she's just a chemist, and she came to these things." And it's like, and it's like like the footage that they have with her where she's just like like telling it to these people, yeah. like, "You need to learn this, and you here's need to deal. learn this, and you need to learn this." And here's the deal: was that I was just like, I love this woman. So, like, I got done with this movie, and... I tried to look her up, because she's in Queens. No, no, because that was literally what I thought was, was that they said at the end of the movie, it's like, you know, she's... It's like she went back to live with her husband quietly in Queens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was that I had a moment where I was like, where in Queens? I'll go visit you, and just, like, I want to knock on your door, Bring give you, you a hug, goods, and yeah. walk away. Like, right. Yeah. Because I loved her so much. But she was one of the people where it was like, she started bringing them into kind of this science end of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you had all of these guys who were incredibly intelligent and incredibly well schooled. Like a couple of them had gone to, you know, they had gone to Harvard. One thing I will say, and and slightly in jest, but out of all the uh, gay people with AIDS that they interviewed, you know, they put the like what they do at the bottom. A lot of lawyers. Right. And a lot of experimental playwrights. (laughs) <laughs> yes, yeah. A lot of experimental right, playwrights. Yeah. And one guy at the end of the film, when they say like what they wound up doing, it's like, this guy became a playwright. And I was like, uh, another one! Yeah. Another playwright! <laughs> I mean, did you... I found I myself... I mean, it's Greenwich <laughs> Village in the 80s. What do you right. want, man? I know, but like... <laughs> I found myself stopping the uh, stopping the, the, the documentary often and just going like, I wonder what this person's up to. And then it's like, oh yeah, dead from AIDS. Yeah. Aww. And it's like, and it's, it's the grim truth, but then... There was this one one of them. There was a bunch of them that are, they they're still yeah, alive they're though, still and alive. that felt cool because I thought all of them were gonna die. The the main the one of the two main guys I know Rafsky. Peter Staley. 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 Yeah. Peter Staley and Rob Rafsky yeah. were is who, two. I would say that's the main focus of the documentary is them two. Well, they're like well Staley especially. I mean, he goes on Crossfire and crushes it. Right. That yeah. was a great scene too. We'll get to that. But that what were you gonna say? Scene. I was just saying that when Staley is you know like he's talking about this and it's. You see him like talking about, oh, I have AIDS, and this is I'm going to die from this. Yeah, and this is all that I'm going. You know, so this will be the rest of my life dedicated to this, fighting this cause. And, you know, he makes it. I guess. I mean, to say to the other side, no, but like now he's able to live a relatively normal life. He's still alive today. Still alive. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, and you know, meanwhile, uh, Rafsky, he passes away. In like '93, I believe, and it's just like if there were only a few more years, you know. And that yeah. scene when he's with Clinton uh, and he he screams, he yells out to Clinton, "I'm dying of AIDS." Was that Staley or Rafsky? That was Rafsky. That was Rafsky. And it was just like, "I'm dying of AIDS. What are you going to do about it?" Yeah. And it's just, yeah. yeah. And Clinton Clinton has a rebuttal, and it's kind of, it's kind of a respectable rebuttal, but right. it's still he's not a. He doesn't seem to be respecting the, the immediacy. It's the best rebuttal a politician could possibly have. Yes, that, especially at the time. Right, yeah. considering he's running for office. Right, and right. And then, it, you know, it's just, 
for a period of time, like I'm watching the documentary and I'm thinking, did is AIDS cured? Because like they have like this uh, now the, a cocktail in which uh, people take and it's it, you know it gives them a normal life too and it goes into remission, but there's no cure. Like there's right. still yeah. no cure. Well, and there's a there's still HIV positive, right? Right. Just there's a there's a a thing within. Like, that's one of the commentaries, actually, in modern, like, after this entire movement mm. that people have brought up is that, uh, and it's not, like, it's one of those things where it's, like, the like these guys did amazing work. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only problem that they ended up with was, was that they made, they accidentally made AIDS a livable disease. Right. That pharmaceutical companies can profit off of. And which they were doing in the beginning with, uh, with uh, AIDS medicine. dollars a year for AZT, Ten, I think. Which is ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Well, and no, and no insurance would cover it, and right. no, and it like, doesn't even work that great for some people. Like no, some and it doesn't people work. Works and but yeah, they later found out like it doesn't work at all, right? Yeah, AZT it's, was useless. A bunch of the other useless. drugs were useless. But you were talking about um, Rafsky yelling at Clinton, which was in a way a publicity stunt. I, it was probably of planned. He's going right. to go there. Yeah. And let's talk about some of those because if you want to talk like great raw footage, oh my these God. guys do a big protest in St. Patrick's Cathedral. Mm-hmm. They go to the. Dude, when they went to the White House and right. threw uh, and threw the ashes ashes on the front that was, lawn, that multiple was, like dozens of people. I love you, I love you, Mike. Oh my god, I was getting that on was the border no no no. Of, like, I that I'm, was I the cried. moment where I, be honest, I, I was that was close. the moment where I was sitting there and I was just like and I was just like oh this is the part that's gonna make me cry. Yeah, right. But every time they would do like a public stunt, I was like this is the height of the movie. This Crossfire, I thought that's the height. St. Patrick's Cathedral, thought that was like, and then they get to that. And I that was that was to me was the height. What I was absolutely amazed by when I saw that footage was was and this was the thought that I had was how does our generation how does our generation love the activism of the, uh, the activism that happens in the 60s and I've never heard of this. Yeah. Right. Like the 60s accomplished nothing. Right. Like you got great art, you got great music, you got mm. a lot of social change where it's women being, you know, getting mm-hmm. a lot of freedom and you have like sexual revolution stuff where it's kind of throwing off puritanical ideas and all these things. But they didn't stop a war. Right. They didn't stop anything. They 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 actually brought around this Reagan era of people who were the same age as them who were incredibly conservative and then became the people in power when Reagan was there. Mm-hmm. Like that's what they generated. These guys have have stuff that's just um like like amazing speaking truth to power yeah and brilliant moments of just like how have i like i was watching them do that where they're throwing the ashes yeah, over the I fence never hear about and that i was like how life? do i not know about this and we were yeah. alive how is, we yeah were like we were alive yeah. And and I remember, and I think some of it is because there's there's like the very sanitized stuff of the AIDS movement where it was. Um, where it was the AIDS quilt. Like, I remember hearing about the AIDS quilt when I was a kid. And I remember hearing about that part that they that they talk about where they laid out all of the pieces of the AIDS quilt, like, on, uh, like, at the mall or whatever. And it covers, like, it's mm-hmm. just enormous. And I remember hearing about the, that when I was a kid. But I'm going to throw my, my life partner's ashes... Right. Over over the fence at the White House in protest of yeah. not having good enough medicine that could have saved their lives. That is insane. Mm-hmm. I want any like activist blogger to watch this movie and be like, "Are you doing enough for your cause that you're so passionate about?" Well, mm-hmm. no, Are and you? that was like honestly, I got to the end of this movie and I it it gave me. I have an opinion that's kind of of various activism things where I'm just like, they're like. I don't feel like they solve enough problems. I feel like they cause a lot of problems in certain in certain respects. Right. And I have a hard time like getting myself up to go and do activism stuff because it doesn't feel I never feel like I'm getting anywhere. But these guys, I think that the main thing with it was was that they just had such a focused like like not message, but like goal. It was like I don't want to die, yeah. and I don't want the people that I love to die. But is I mean, could you say that the mission? I would say in terms of activism, uh, the mission. You know, they've succeeded. They got. Oh, they got far. 
It was successful, but is it mission accomplished? Because there still is no cure for AIDS. I mean, they just string you along with a cocktail of drugs that yeah. gives you that lead, where you lead a near normal life. But is it really well, normal? I think there's no cure for AIDS, not for lack of trying anymore. Whereas back then it was lack of acknowledgement, lack of trying. Right there, there was not. There was like what one or two drugs initially on the market. That was it, and they and they were well, getting for stuff a long from time, uh, there was none. Yeah, but they I mean, were it was they like were you got AIDS and you were dead within a month. Right. Mm-hmm. They were getting drugs from like Europe, Mexico, any place they could because you right. know, and that was that was the focus. But uh yeah, th- I want I want to talk about the crossfire thing, man. Yeah. Cuz Staley Staley goes on crossfire and this is just like a young sharp-looking guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, he just the public speaking you know, that some of these guys were capable of as well was really out of this world like he goes on crossfire and he just totally puts down. What, was that guy's name Tom Brady? Um, the old, really old guy. Because Tom Buchanan. Brady and Pat Buchanan. Pat Buchanan, right? Pat Buchanan was kind of like on the name. fence initially, kind of like trying to play ball a little bit with Staley, and mm-hmm. then Staley basically puts it to Buchanan as like, "Do you want to be responsible for all these deaths?" And Buchanan just cuts away. He's like, "Well, that's it for tonight." Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, because no Pat Buchanan is Pat Buchanan is staunchly conservative Mm -hmm. he's libertarian in uh primarily so like that's why he has the thing where he's like you should be able to take whatever drugs you want and you should be able to do this and i believe in your right to do this entire thing but he is incredibly conservative in his uh view on gay people like he's like religiously conservative on his view on gay people so his thing was was that he was like you should be able to do whatever you want in your bedroom while you go to hell like it was like what (laughs) yeah that's weird that's a strange stance um i also just wanted to say in terms of a documentary, because that's the thing. Obviously, this is a riveting story, but we watched uh, documentary video games, the movie. Mm-hmm. That was your last pick, Steven. Yeah, right. Which I think we all... Is that a dud? That was a that dud, was a right? Dud. That was a dud, That yeah. was a dud. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and you know, it could have been great because we like video games, but the structure of that documentary was horrible. And yeah. the cutscenes and the music were horrible. Yeah. That's another thing, too. This movie had... Fanta- this documentary had fantastic music. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great music. Every time it went to a montage, it was appropriate. It was still gripping. It wasn't just like... Yeah, hokey. Like the B-roll was wasn't horrible. Right? No, 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 like the, an Enron too. You know, when, another example. Oh, yeah, of yeah, like, yeah, yeah, of like doing, just the not a well put together doing, documentary. They're doing uh, flips on motorcycles. Yeah. And yeah. Enron. Well, no, and that's why, like with this one, you know what it was to me was that, and this was like the most heartbreaking thing to me was that when they decided to do a montage, when they decided to do a like just like we need something, like what it felt like was was you know like it's like we need filler. To like show the passing of time between uh-huh. different activities that happened, was that they would just show what felt like the last footage in existence of somebody. Right. Where it was like it was just the l- it was like the last moment of this guy's life, mm-hmm. and it's somebody that we've never met, and he's just a guy. Go- it's frail just like old a, body. it's a f- it's just a friend or a lover or. You know, just somebody that they knew who was living in Greenwich Village, dying of AIDS in that time. And it was just, that to me was one of the most heartbreaking things was just, and it brought it into perspective in that sense that was like the the enorm- the enorm enormous just like stretch of this disease. Right. Where it was like, it didn't, it, it was everybody. It was it was like everybody in, and I've heard different talks and stuff like that. There's a there's a really great NPR thing that happened with uh, where they talked to the guy who is the bartender at uh, uh oh my god, yeah, I can't remember the name of it. It's in Greenwich Village. It's okay. where they had like the riots and stuff like that over gay rights protests. I can't believe I'm forgetting the name. Stonewall. Stonewall. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the the bartender at Stonewall, and he would talk about during the AIDS crisis where it was like. You would like people would be coming in and you'd see them get thinner and mm-hmm. thinner and right. thinner and then you would never see them again. Yeah, and it would be over the course of like three months. It mm-hmm. would be like you would watch them come into the bar and they just it'd be like, hey, you're looking kind like like you're you've lost some weight. Oh yeah, you're looking kind of oh you're looking kind of sick, and then they just never see them again. Right, and that was just how it was back when then. When watching the documentary or film or what have you, you see the social aspect of Rafsky's life. I think just watching like footage of him raising his daughter. Yeah. Because before he yeah. came out, it, well, he says himself, I came out during a very dangerous time. And he's raising his daughter. And then that scene where it's at his funeral. 
and his daughter starts to cry, and it's just like, oh. she. This is the weight of what it is. This yeah. is what's happening. Like uh, the movie uh, focuses a lot. Like you see Rafsky's personal life. Like there's a lot of footage of that. Whereas the other character, what's his name again? Staley. Peter Staley. Staley. Peter Staley. You see more of like his like rise to uh, like his activism aspect. Not to yeah. say that they don't cut down uh, the Rafsky's, but you see more of the social aspect. And you know the thing is with um, with any group, the group splits up. Act Up splits that off. That was kind of depressing in the movie right. when the gang yeah. started falling apart. Um, and and Staley says that. Yeah. He says that, you know, if you look at the Wikipedia page, I, or uh, I'm not sure if it was the Wikipedia page or somewhere else where he states that, you know, I regret that it, we split up. I regret that we lost focus. I regret that, yeah. you know, that this is what had to happen. And uh, I think it's, um, the thing is, this uh, movie doesn't focus on the origin of AIDS. It focuses on, it's a very... Uh, s- very like limited amount of things that it focuses on. You know, it's very yeah. specific, very specific as to what it does. Yeah, I it's think focused. it's about it's about act up and it's about uh, pharmaceutical reform. I think if if the, if I was to put the movie in two things, I'd say it's about act up and how act up started the pharmaceutical reform for AIDS. I would say AIDS reformation, and that's really what it comes down to. You I know? see. To me, AIDS reformation. Can I just say, kind of sounds funny. <laughs> AIDS reformation. Yeah, like um, in, like in terms of how, as a society, we we start to view it differently. How it changed, okay. uh, you know, and that's and that's. I the thing. agree. It's, I agree with both of you right now. Yeah. <laughs> like, like that's the thing, and it's very specific, and it sticks to that, and that's what makes it a good documentary. Well, and, and um, I think that the thing that it really makes, to me, what makes it a really great documentary is that they it. It synthesizes that human, that human thing mm-hmm. of not only the want to live and fight, right, but the want to help people that you love right. live and fight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it definitely, like, it gave me that feeling by the end of it where I was like, I want to go. Like I like like I have problems with like I have problems with people that have a ton of money and it made me want to be like I want to go punch a rich person like I just wanted to like I wanted you to lost act focus out. right there <laughs> it's no no, no like I wanted to act it made me it made me feel like yeah if we all just get together we can make something happen we can happen. get stuff done yeah we can punch rich because people that that part <laughs> where you were like that part where you were like uh, where you're talking about them breaking apart right the the moment where. That to me was also one of the most like one of the most riveting speaking moments mm-hmm. was the moment inside one of those meetings where the guy uh, I can't even I know remember you're gonna who say, Larry it Kramer. was Larry, Larry Kramer. Kramer yeah yeah where he's like it's a plague yeah. yeah they're bickering they're bickering and they're bickering and he's just like that to me is that it's like I almost feel like I want to like take that scene and just like keep it on my computer and when I'm losing focus on any project just yeah. like watch that to be like to be like. Yeah, that's how you keep focus. You just gotta like hammer through it and understand like really what the mm-hmm. problem is and the true thing. And again, like how lucky are we? And I'll put it like that: like how lucky are we that someone was there at that meeting to catch that? Like that looks like a scene yeah. out of a directed movie. Yeah, right. someone's a couple feet away from the side and just immediately hits him as this guy screams "plague" at like an audience of two hundred people mm-hmm. who are all who a lot of them are gonna die. Yeah, you know, and he's trying to get them focused in and. You know, someone's there and films this entire speech. Like someone, we're lucky to see this movie that they, that you know, they throw the ash on the White House lawn. They did the thing in St. Patrick's Cathedral. It's so cool to me that we get to see that. That's not just yeah. a story I'll read about on the internet. Right? Yeah, I got to see how it went down. That's really cool. That's why I think this movie's worth streaming. It is kind of, it's it's very heavy. It's a very heavy thing. Like I wouldn't watch this casually, like mm. Casey said. You wouldn't recommend yeah. it casually, but if you if it ever came up in conversation. This would be the documentary I'd throw down. No longer oh, yeah. will I say, hey, Philadelphia with Tom Hanks really is a good place. I was about to bring up Philadelphia where yeah, I was yeah. like, I would watch this movie over Philadelphia. There you oh, go. Oh, I would say, to. yeah, this over Philadelphia. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so uh, to wrap it up, I mean, I'm going with stream it. I'm, I'm hoping KC might change, change his mind. I'm gonna, you know, it took me, like, at the 15-minute mark, I was like, what am I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> am, I, am I just a dumb person? Like, it, you know what? This movie should be required. It should be. Re- you can agree with me. You can both agree with me. It should be required viewing in every school. Yes. It should be sent into space. Right. It should just be. Li- it, well, that's a negative. Well, with <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's no, that's like the golden record, man. <laughs> oh, okay. But I'm just saying, like, you made it's like, yeah. In sp- this what? movie needs to be buried this in the desert. This should be shot into the sun. Yeah. <laughs> no one should see the light of day about. Uh, but no, it's uh, you know what, man. I'm. 
it's this is like our pod our pod. You're gonna have this on your conscience if you if you it's, say don't. Stream. No, I, I don't. <laughs> Fifteen minutes in, I said to myself, "This was it shouldn't just be required viewing in every school. It should be required viewing for every person." So I'm gonna say stream it. You know what? I'm gonna change my mind. <laughs> 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 no, I'm gonna say definitely stream it. I've said what I had to say. I really like this film. I don't know if I'll ever watch it again, but I would recommend it to a lot of people to watch. Very educational and very riveting. Very entertaining. Yeah. 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 So what do we watch next week? Next week, uh, we got a special St. Patrick's Day edition, guys. Ooh. This is a movie that's been recommended to me for a long time. It's my pick, Dennis Rooney. And we're going to watch The Quiet Man, which I think it's like late 60s or early 70s. And it stars John Wayne, and he does a bad Irish accent, I hear. And and, <laughs> and find out well, what Dennis's mom said to Dennis when he thought about recommending this movie. Tune in next week. Tune in next week, and I'll tell you what my mom said about this movie. <laughs> All right. Say goodbye, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye.